Hey guys, it's Cameron here. So today's video is going to be a little bit different than my regular videos. It's been quite some time since I've uploaded. I felt like with everything going on right now, it was very important for me to not go about my life regularly. It just doesn't feel right. However, I do have this platform and it is not a big platform, but it's something and I promised myself that I would use all of my social media platforms to spread awareness for what's going on and to educate people. Eventually, I will go back to my normal uploading, but for now, it just doesn't feel like the time's right. But I still wanted to come on here and talk to you guys about this because I definitely feel really passionate about all of this stuff going on um i have a lot of emotions and things i want to share with you guys i wrote a lot of notes on my laptop i just have been feeling a lot of emotions and i've kind of just written down little thoughts and feelings and things that i've read on different social medias that i feel like were important things to share with you guys if you follow my instagram or my twitter you have definitely seen that i've been very vocal about what's going on i've been trying to share as many petitions and donations as i can and i also have been trying to just repost as many news stories and things like that as I can because I want to spread as much awareness as possible. I've definitely been donating and doing my part but I feel like it's so important for me to share that all with you guys so that you guys maybe will do your part as well. I'm going to continue doing the same thing that I'm doing on my social media platforms for as long as I need to because I think it's really important to continue spreading awareness and for us to not just forget about this in a few days because this has been going on for so, so long. So I'm going to continue being vocal about everything. I grew up in a predominantly white neighborhood. I went to a predominantly white middle school and elementary school and most of my friends were white. And as I got older, I ended up going to a very diverse high school. It was in a predominantly black and Hispanic city. And um, I made a lot of friends from different cultures, ethnicities, races, everything from all over. And I'm so grateful for the experiences that I had at that high school because I feel that it has taught me so many lessons. And being able to experience different groups of people is just something that I feel like everyone needs at one point in their life. I definitely still think that even the people who are in more predominantly white communities, it's still important for you to understand and educate yourselves and don't be closed off to everything just because you're not around black people or people of color at all. Like I said, definitely going to a diverse high school has helped me a lot. I feel like in high school, we didn't learn enough about racism and just black history as much as we should have. And it's like crazy because it shows because there's literally a course called black history and it's like why does it have to be a course called black history like why can't we why can't black history actually be included in the regular history curriculum and i love that they have a black history class and i heard great things about that class i didn't actually get to take it but like why is black history not is it not important enough to be considered in a regular history class because think about at the predominantly white schools do you think they have a black history class Probably not. So things like that happen at every high school, even in predominantly black communities with no white students. You know, it's it's just sad. And I think that a lot of the education systems need to fix that 100%. But just being able to experience people of different races, ethnicities, and things like that has been able to open my eyes and shape a lot of my opinions and my thoughts on things. I'm also so grateful to have a family who are very open-minded and you know they're all for all people obviously you guys know i have a black boyfriend and for a lot of people dating outside of the race it can be an issue and i'm lucky that it's never been an issue for me because you know i've been with brandon for so many years and he's such an important part of my life so i'm lucky that the interracial part of our relationship has never really been an issue ever a lot of my closest friends are hurting right now because of what's going on um, and it's affecting them directly and they're scared for their lives and don't get me wrong I'm very upset too and like I'm very frustrated and angry but I know that I'll never be able to feel to the extent that they're feeling it because they're the ones actually going through it as a white person or just a non-black person any anyone who's not black you are allowed to be upset you're supposed to be upset like any human should be upset with what's happening yes you can't feel how they're feeling you may never understand to the fullest extent because you're not actually going through it but you should be upset it shouldn't be something where it's because it's not affecting 
you you can just go ahead and live your life normally and do whatever you want to do because it's not affecting you I get annoyed by people who are like I don't post about politics I'm not into politics all this stuff it's not politics at this point it's literally human decency nobody deserves to be treated the way black people are treated in America and in other countries too nobody deserves that that's something that everybody needs to learn is that just because it's not affecting you does not mean you can't be upset about it does not mean you can't be passionate about the movement it's so important for people of other races to come together in this movement and make it happen you know work towards our goal of like equality and things like that and the first step with that is for white people to understand their white privilege over the past years i have educated myself and i have become very woke to a lot of these issues and things like that and it is up to you to you know want to educate yourself and to want to understand and the first step of that is understanding white privilege i'm honestly just gonna lay it out for you guys white privilege does not mean that you have not faced hardships in your life you could be a white male who grew up in a very low income neighborhood and your family could have faced poverty things like that economically maybe you're not privileged but because of the fact that you're white you have white privilege you are privileged because of the color of your skin you may not be privileged in other aspects of your life but because you're white that gives you privilege over black people it's so important to recognize your white privilege and not get offended by it so many people are getting offended and are getting defensive like no i don't have privilege i grew up with struggling financially like i had a ton of family issues i like lost this this and this person and like yes you've gone through a lot and i'm sorry for that but none of those things happen to you because of the color of your skin all of these things may be issues in your life, but the color of your skin is not an issue in your life. There are black people who might have great lives, who may be financially stable or wealthy, but their skin color is still an issue in their life. So therefore, they might be privileged financially, but they're not privileged because of the color of their skin. So you have to kind of understand it like that. And I think white fragility is a huge problem in this country. A lot of white people take it offensively that when people try to tell them that they have privilege or point out their privilege. So white people, to make a change, you have to understand your white privilege. Like, I'm seeing people at protests who are white, who are standing in front of black people to block them off from the police officers because they know they have privilege and they know they're going to get away with things over black people. And it's just the reality in our country. And it's the things that we want to change, but they can't be changed until we actually, like, notice it so you must understand that privilege that you have and use that privilege to help the people struggling right now black people who are being oppressed for years who are facing inequality and injustices you need to be the one to help them use your voice because at this point why are black people going to be the only ones fighting for their own lives we need to be fighting for their lives as well and it's honestly gotten to the point where they're not being listened to nobody is hearing them out they're being pushed away but if more people who are not black can start speaking up and standing up for them their voices may be heard more than they're being heard right now as i was saying that you know more white people need to start speaking out about the injustices happening and actually care about what's going on i've been seeing a lot of things on social media and i just want to kind of address something that a lot of people are angry about what's going on and they're angry that people aren't speaking out and yes social media should not define that because there may be people who don't use social media but are donating to so many different organizations and are signing so many petitions or are going to protest but they just don't post it and that's understandable the issue at hand here is with the people who over the past week have been partying complaining about their little issues in their lives acting as if nothing was happening if you have the time to post on social media you getting drunk with your friends you should have the time to post some news articles post donations post petitions for people to sign spread awareness do something and the thing that was getting me angry were the people who decided to participate in blackout tuesday a day of silence a day to not post anything else and all they would do is post about black screen it's like they were okay with doing that because they didn't have to actually address any issues at hand all they had to do was post a black screen and for them that was easy to do but it's not easy for them to post petitions for people to sign or even speak out about how they're feeling about what's going on so i just felt like that's the ignorance that people are getting upset about i have to understand that it's a very hard and scary time for a lot of people and people are frustrated and upset set and you can't get mad at them for reacting the way they're reacting like if a black person is seeing one of their white friends completely silent about what's going on but acting like everything's fine and going about their lives normally 
that's okay to upset them. They have a reason to be upset. I am also seeing people out there who are saying they want to delete social media and honestly, I get it. It's a sad time and I think it's really important to take breaks from social media. Not be on it all day every day because it does take a toll on you mentally. However, deleting social media will be blocking you from all of the news and the things going on and I know you can just watch the news but honestly I've realized that the news doesn't cover everything that Twitter covers. You see so much more on Twitter and the news is so biased. They honestly show all of the bad stuff that the protesters are doing. They never show the videos you see on Twitter where it's peaceful protests and the police are starting the violence. So I feel like having social media right now is important because you're seeing the real stuff. And if you're one of those people who wants to delete it because you're annoyed by all of the Black Lives Matter posts in the movement, then like you need to reevaluate your life. I also wanted to touch on the people who are saying that they feel uncomfortable to speak out. And I understand things can be uncomfortable, but it's come to a point where being uncomfortable is not an excuse. Like, you need to educate yourself and you need to speak out because you can't continue walking around being uncomfortable because no change is gonna be made. Like, I know it's hard for some people who don't have families who are open-minded and accepting and you know, it's caused a lot of issues between people and their family, but it's so important for you as a white person to call out racism, to stand up to people who sound uneducated, educate them. It's gotten to the point where black people don't need to, need to be educating white people on stuff. It's, we have the sources, we can go out and educate ourselves. You also can educate your family members. You know, it's crazy to me because I never understood in my life how you could not like someone because of the color of their skin. I've always just been friends with anyone. Like, I don't pick my friends based off what they look like. That's something in this world that so many people need to, like, start valuing and start understanding. I think that a lot of people think that just because they're throwing up one post on their Instagram story that they're making a difference. But I know a lot of people are not good with words or may not use social media like that. But you do want to voice your own opinions and use your own words sometimes and actually speak out on issues because it just makes it so much more meaningful at this point in time like you need to do more than just making posts and reposting things you need to show the black community that you are there for them and that you support them through this fight and this battle i want to address the whole all lives matter controversy which should not be a controversy people are mad that Black Lives Matter is being emphasized but All Lives Matter is not and I just want to explain it to you real quick that your life matters, everyone's life matters, but black people are treated as if their lives do not matter. So that is what the Black Lives Matter movement is for. We cannot say all lives matter until black lives matter and right now black lives are treated like they don't. So we're going to continue the Black Lives Matter movement and if you don't understand it, let me put it to you like this. Say your house is on fire and you call the fire department, right? Of course the fire department is going to come to your house to put out the fire. Say your neighbor comes up to them and says, but what about my house? What about your house? Your house isn't on fire. Yeah, but my house is still a house. My house still matters. Okay, but right now your house does not matter because your house is not on fire. That is exactly how it is. All lives matter, but your life is not on fire right now. Your life is treated like it matters. Black lives are not treated like they matter. And that is what everyone needs to understand a little bit more. So for the people saying all lives matter, you are a part of the problem. I also want to talk about the protests that are going on and I just wanted to say the first thing before I get into anything. If you are complaining about the looting, but not complaining about the murder of innocent black lives, specifically George Floyd, you are a part of the problem. How could you complain about the looting? Million dollar corporations who will get their businesses back over a life. A life cannot be given back. Materialistic things, you can get that back. Money, you can get that back. A life, you can't get that back. I get it, small businesses are being destroyed and I wish they were not, but people are angry right now. And I saw something on Facebook today that I wanna share with you guys. Here's my take on the riots in Minneapolis. As a teacher, when a student wrecks a classroom, throws things, break things, slams things, and completely melts down, that's called trauma. We're supposed to respond by standing with that child, loving that child, and working to heal that child. What is happening in Minneapolis and has happened in other places, to me, is an act of trauma. A kind of trauma that no white person in America can fathom. A kind of trauma that source is deep, evil, and generational. It stems from slavery, oppression, torture, and long-standing hate. George Floyd's mur murder is a clear matter of this reality. The reaction is trauma. Why wouldn't we respond by standing with black people, loving black people, and working hand-in-hand -hand with our black communities in order to heal? That just explained it so well. Like, they have faced issues 
of oppression, inequality, injustice for years and years and years, and they've tried peaceful protests, and after a while, being peaceful doesn't get you anywhere. And I get it, businesses are being destroyed, but their voices have not been heard for years. And I also do want to point out too that the news does not show you everything. And that's why I think social media, especially Twitter, is so important because you will see that a lot of these protests are peaceful and until the cops want to come out with tear gas and guns and rubber bullets and things like that and just start firing at people for no reason. The amount of videos of peaceful protests I have seen, the amount of celebrities who have posted about protests being completely peaceful and that the officers are the ones making the protests violent is actually insane. So I want you guys to kind of maybe look at it in another perspective, go on social media, see the videos, all that kind of stuff because you will learn a lot more than what you already know. Also, I just wanted to say with the looting that I have seen a lot of evidence of people who were specifically going to protest for the looting, for the free things. They didn't actually care about the movement and there are a lot of people out there and most of those people are non-black people and they know that the consequences aren't going to be pinned on them, that the consequences consequences will be pinned on the protesters and they're completely taking advantage of that and I think that's completely wrong. I think that also is something that a lot of people should keep in mind that it's not always the protesters and that a lot of protests do start peaceful and there's a lot of reasons of why they become violent and there's a lot more than what you're seeing on the news and I think it's really important to kind of look into things yourself and look at a lot of the videos you're seeing online because a lot of these videos will not be shown on the news. I specifically saw on a news channel that they showed a video of a police car driving up to a crowd of people and they stopped the video before the end because the end of the video showed the police car driving into that group of people but they didn't show that all they showed was the car right against the people but right when it was about to drive they stopped showing the video so keep that in mind that your news sources are definitely not showing you everything I also want to talk about the fact that in Michigan these white supremacists were walking around with AR-15s and they were up in police officers face faces and you specifically see videos of the police officers standing there like this not doing anything while people are in their faces with guns because they don't want to wear masks to the supermarket or that was the reason for protesting and they did not get tear gas they did not get shot with rubber bullets they did not get beat to the ground the police just stood there and took it and they actually had guns and weapons and that's the craziest part so i think you guys should really look into it a little more before you want to go on social media saying the looting is horrible this and that honestly a huge part of the whole issue that we're facing is our president which is why i encourage everyone to register to vote because we need to get him out of office like we need to because the fact that our president is the way he is is allowing these racist people to think that they can act the way they're acting they feel entitled they feel empowered our president literally went on twitter and said that the minneapolis protesters were thugs but he said that the michigan protesters were good people who just wanted their like lives back or something it's just ridiculous honestly like, if you do support trump and i know like i don't want to sit here and have a political debate with anyone but like you should really think about what he stands for but i'm not gonna really get into that any further i'm not gonna lie i feel like i've kind of been all over the place in this video because i've just been really angry and upset about a lot of things but i also have not actually mentioned the whole thing that happened with george floyd yet and the reason i didn't mention it in the beginning of the video is because i wanted to make it known that it's not just the issue with george floyd that sparked all of the anger it is the problems that have been going on for years and years and years and i think that what happened with george floyd was just what kind of i guess made people finally say you know what like we're done dealing with this we need to do something but what happened to george floyd was horrible and if you agree with that then you would also agree with everything else that I've said in this video. It makes me upset that something could even happen to someone like that. That someone could do something to somebody like that and then be charged with third degree murder. Third degree murder is unintentional murder. He intentionally killed George Floyd. He kneeled on his neck. He could not breathe and he said it so many times. He was screaming for his mother. For I think it was eight minutes he was on his neck and the other cops just watched and actually there was footage of the other cops kneeling on his back three other cops nobody deserves that no matter what he did whatever you said he did which is not even anything that should have made them react to the way they did no one deserves that and it's just sad how many black people are being taken from the world for no reason at all by cops these are people who are here to protect and make us feel safe and serve for our country like and they're literally making people fear their lives they're treating people like they're dirt 
and it's just it's like really upsetting it's so important to recognize people who were senselessly murdered by police authorities and say their names george floyd did not deserve to die Ahmaud Arbery did not deserve to die. Breonna Taylor did not deserve to die. Trayvon Martin did not deserve to die. Sandra Bland did not deserve to die. Tamir Rice did not deserve to die. And the list just goes on and on and on of so many innocent lives taken and so many lives that they did not deserve that treatment at all. And it just makes me like sick to my stomach to even, you know, read the stories of what happened to these people and people who literally just got away with murder it's murder police brutality at this point is murder and for the people who want to argue with me in my instagram dms and say that george floyd wouldn't want this chaos and this hate yes the protests are for george floyd but they're not only for george floyd they're for the the issues that have been going on for years like Black people are protesting their lives. This is a movement. Black Lives Matter. Like, yes, it's about George Floyd, but it's about more than that at this point. It's about the many lives who have been taken by police officers or the many lives, black lives that have been taken in general and their killers just walk free. So I just wanted to end the video off just mentioning a few things. There's a lot that you guys can do to help. I have linked many different resources down below. There are different foundations that you can donate to. There are different petitions that you can sign. There are also different videos that I linked down below that the full commission that they make off those videos are going to different foundations bail funds um, families of victims of police brutality and because I know some people don't have the money to donate and that's completely understandable but you do have other options so I'd link that down below as well I also have linked multiple resources for you guys to educate yourselves linked the black lives matter card that gives you tons of petitions donations books things like that for you guys to look into i also linked one of my friends um blog that she has her name is nade it's housenade.com and she has posted so many sources that you can use to educate yourselves on what's going on and i wanted to share that with you guys so everything will be down in the description below another thing that you guys can do is just to keep using your voice on all social media platforms and off social media as well honestly just keep in mind that all lives don't matter until black lives matter we need to work together to keep fighting for the Black Lives Matter movement. And also something that I just want everyone to keep in mind is not to stay silent on this. I saw a quote that I literally keep reiterating this quote to people is that staying silent in situations of inequality is choosing the side of the oppressor. So make sure that you use your voice and educate yourselves, do your part and we have to work together to fix all of these issues. That's pretty much everything that I wanted to say. This video is really long, but if you watched it, I really appreciate it. Also guys, I have a very small platform and I make a little bit of commission on my videos, but if I make any commission whatsoever on this video i will be donating those two different foundations that i've linked down below so that's basically it thank you guys for watching remember keep using your voice and if you have a platform keep using that platform and i'll see you guys in my next video bye guys